Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic, two tennis legends who have had very contrasting fortunes over the past year. I am here to preview their upcoming matches at the Madrid Open. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the tennis vlog. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Once again, it has been quite a long time and I apologize for the length of time since the last upload. There has been a lot of tennis already this clay court season. We have seen a premiere event on the women's tour. We've seen a Masters 1000 event on the men's tour. I do plan to comment on the action that has been in the near future, but for now we are at the Madrid Open for both the men and the women, a premiere event and a Masters 1000 event. The schedule is a bit strange in that players such as Denis Shapovalov are already into the third round and then other players are only just at the time of filming playing the first round matches so I was a bit confused when it came to deciding upon matches to preview and predict. So I am going to try and preview quarterfinal matches, semi-final matches, all of that stuff but for now I just decided to pick two big names who have been enduring contrasting roads for the past year or so and look at their upcoming matches. So the first match I am previewing today is world number one Rafael Nadal's clash with world number 41 Gael Monfils. Very hot and cold as Gael Monfils as people will know if you have watched him. He has been ranked as high as world number six thanks to his insane athletic ability. Did I say thank or did I say thanks? And the genius winners that he just pulls out of nowhere. Injury and general hot and coldness has had its say regarding Monfils ranking but history shows that he can push Nadal. Keeping this short sweet and to the point Rafael Nadal has been dominant on clay so far this season, which isn't an unfamiliar sight, but it is one that few expected to see again after the year of 2015, when he seemed to be on a downward spiral in terms of his mental state and his physical game. Raise your hand if you never wrote him off. Last year on the dirt, Nadal didn't really have any major problems. He was dominating from the baseline, turning defence into attack, really comfortable in all areas of the court. He lost just once in the Rome Masters to Dominic Team, who played the second best clay court tennis of the 2017 season. I think everybody knows the statistics, like they know nursery rhymes or whatever the known thing is right now. Nadal has won 46 straight sets on clay courts and in all of those sets he has only dropped more than four games in a set one time. I have heard it suggested that Nadal's total dominance on the surface presently is due to his lack of any real challenges. Honestly, for a 10-time French Open champion and someone of Nadal's ability on clay, I don't buy that at all. As previously mentioned, Dominic Team played some incredible clay court tennis last year and hasn't been too shabby this season either. He won a really tough one against Novak Djokovic at the Monte Carlo Masters coming through in three sets, then went on to play Nadal and got absolutely hammered. Every time he's been up against a fairly informed opponent, Nadal has just come out of the blocks absolutely focused and nailing his marks. He has played two clay court tournaments so far this season, he has won them both with minimal fuss, no fuss basically. One Masters 1000 title in Monte Carlo and one 500 title in Barcelona. To be completely honest with you, due to a pretty busy period I haven't been able to watch as much tennis as I would like so I can't talk in depth about Nadal's clay court game but I know how it goes, I've been watching this guy on the surface for years. The atmosphere is just a perfect fit for his top spin, even when his opponents know what's coming. When Stefano Tsitsipas played Nadal in the Barcelona final he expressed that he'd been watching Nadal for years, he kind of knew what was going to come, he felt like he knew his game. That was nothing if Nadal was feeling it. If Nadal is going out there feeling comfortable, feeling confident, he can take that ball whether he's on the front foot or the back foot and he can dictate and put it where he wants it and finish the point. For most of you the biggest question is not will Nadal beat Gael Monfils but why are you previewing and predicting this match in the first place because isn't it pretty obvious who is going to win? Well, first of all, I would like to say that I am not yet writing Nadal down for a French Open win, as many people have. I think last year Nadal was a little bit fortunate in that he lost to team in Rome. It gave him that extra bit of recovery time, of rest time, ahead of Roland Garros, where he was going to play seven best of five set matches. Now, as he goes on in his career, it's more important that he has enough energy, that he's not feeling so fatigued. Given how comfortable he's feeling and the experience he has, chances are that 
tiredness isn't going to be a big factor anyway, but injury might be. Nadal was struggling with injury at the beginning of the year and it cost him time on court, which may be helpful to him now, but his body more than anyone else's due to his gritty and grinding style of play is always going to be vulnerable, so he needs to be careful. Meanwhile, he's up against another player who knows all about dealing with injury. Monfils had to end his 2017 season early due to more physical issues. The Frenchman has been back on tour since the beginning of the year and he won the first tournament that he played in Qatar. He didn't play anyone ranked inside the top 30, but this was still big for his confidence. He hadn't won a singles title in a good while. Since then, he has made the semi-finals of another ATP tournament and this was on clay and he chose to play a clay court tournament ahead of some of the American hard court tournaments and that shows just how comfortable he feels on the surface. One thing that I found quite interesting about this upcoming matchup and that made me want to preview it particularly is that this was the 2016 Monte Carlo final between Nadal and Monfils and Nadal came through that one in three sets. True, Nadal was still finding his feet again in 2016, however, he was in decent clay court form that year with injury ending his French Open title hopes, and Monfils showed in that match in Monte Carlo that he has what it takes to trouble the Spaniard. I'll link to the highlights below so you can check them out. You can see that Monfils was doing well to hang with Nadal in a lot of the rallies in the first two sets, and then he was bringing flat winners down the line out of the bag, out of the blue, really. He's one of those players that can just get on top of the ball, thwack it down, put it in a good place on the court in terms of depth and in terms of closeness to the line, meaning that it's very difficult for his opponent to get back into the rally. Naturally, this is more difficult to do on clay given the slowness of the surface and it's not so effective to just hit a flat shot, but it is the way that Monfils times it and the way that he executes it that makes it so effective. He can also come to the net, he can mix it up, he really has an all-round great game and he is not known as one of the greatest players in the game never to have won a grand slam for no reason. Now Monfils did fade away in the third set of that match very quickly. Uh, he lost it six love and this is one big concern for Monfils because not only is he hot and cold in general in terms of strings of results, he's very hot and cold during matches as well and he can hang tough for so long, make things look really close and then just suddenly fade away. So this is a big concern and it's one of the major reasons that I don't see him pulling off a win over Nadal in Madrid. Interestingly Nadal has said previously and not so long ago either that the atmosphere in Madrid takes a bit of getting used to. You need a bit more time to actually get used to the conditions and really feel comfortable in them. So not only is Monfils a tough opening round draw for him, but this is the opportunity where Nadal is at his most vulnerable and most likely to be upset, if that is even possible on clay. Now looking at the head-to-head, -head, the duo have played 15 times in total with Nadal winning on a whopping 13 of those occasions. This includes all six of their clay court meetings, so pretty dominant stats for Nadal as he has against most players, let's be honest. Monfils' only real chances here are to bring his best tennis out consistently and to hope that Nadal is still settling into the conditions and maybe feeling the mental and physical fatigue of winning so well for so long. So it will not surprise you at all to hear that I am predicting Rafael Nadal to win this match and due to Monfils' recent form I'm going to predict him to do it in straight sets, but as I say, Monfils is hot and cold and this could actually turn out to be a really close and a really good match, or it could be a thrashing, so yeah. So that's the defending champions match previewed, and now moving on to another former champion, that's world number 12 world number 12, Novak Djokovic, who won the Madrid Open in 2016. He will be taking on world number 22, Kyle Edmund, in the second round. Edmund, aged 23, the new British number one in the absence of Andy Murray, continually struggling with injury, that's Murray, not Edmund, and a Grand Slam semi-finalist after his run to the last four at the Australian Open. When Kyle Edmonds was still in the juniors, there was hype surrounding a few other British players, Liam Brody, Oliver Golding, to name a few, but I always had my eye on Edmund. Easy to overlook him because he didn't have a massive weapon that stood out in his game, but throughout his career, he seems to have had a good attitude, a very focused way of approaching his game, and he's playing some pretty smart tennis at the moment. Unusually for a British player, his favourite surface 
surface is clay and that he has already made a Grand Slam semi-final on hard courts shows that he has something to deal with on all surfaces. Edmund hasn't done too badly at backing up that run, which was pretty surprising, although he had a decent draw in Melbourne. He struggled with injury just after Melbourne, but he started the clay court season very well, reaching his first ATP final in Morocco. After beating Richard Gasquet in the semi-finals, he lost to Spain's Pablo Andujar in the final. That was a really bad pronunciation, but we're rolling with it. Last week he went out in the quarterfinals in Portugal, however he won the doubles title, which was his first ATP title of any kind. So Edmund comes into this match with Djokovic in decent form and with a win in Madrid already under his belt, and that was over Daniel Medvedev, another very promising youngster who is no stranger to an upset. Edmund was very controlled and very focused, and that is the key element of his game at the moment, his focus and his concentration on that placement and that consistency in his game. Moving over to Novak Djokovic, his struggles of the past two years after an incredible, phenomenal period of domination are very well known. He's struggled with injury and he has struggled with a total lack of confidence and mental strength used to be his biggest asset, so this has been a serious problem for him. He's gone through it all, breaking up with his entire coaching team, bringing on Andre Agassi, breaking up with Andre Agassi, and now he has former coach Marion Vida back on his team, which I think is a great move for Djokovic. He was part of a winning formula for him. I wrote a fairly substantial amount on Djokovic on Monday after his opening round win in Madrid against Kei Nishikori, very big name clash for a first round encounter at a Masters 1000 event. And for once I'm actually going to save my breath and tell you to go and check that out because I left a lot of my thoughts and analysis there and a bit of pondering over his path over the past year. Pause the video here read that piece and come back. That would be a very good idea. Djokovic had a very dominant head-to-head -head record against Nishikori, but Nishikori is one of the best clay court players on tour, I believe, when he's actually in a physical state that allows him to play his best tennis. He's a very complete player and a very consistent player in the rallies, which is so important on clay. Nishikori certainly didn't play his best tennis against Djokovic, and Djokovic didn't play his best either. But the most important thing for me, looking at Djokovic in Madrid, was the fact that he brought his best tennis in the biggest moments when it mattered, and it has been in the pressure points of matches during the year so far, where Djokovic has experienced little success, that he has crumbled, and it's these pressure moments where he used to be one of the most, if not the most, reliable player on tour. So while there is work to be done on the return game, on his movements, on his general consistency throughout the match, the biggest positive for Djokovic was which points he was winning against Nishikori. It was a very tight match and it could have gone either way, but Djokovic won in straight sets, which tells you something. Looking at the head-to-head -head now, Djokovic has faced Edmund three times and he has been the winner on all three occasions, and this includes a meeting in Indian Wells last season when Djokovic was not in great form, however he still got that win in straight sets. Two things worth noting is that so far they have only played on hard courts, so no meetings on clay, and also they have not met since Edmund really broke out on tour, which I would say was end of last year, beginning of this year. So Djokovic has never met a fully-fledged Kyle Edmund, so it will be interesting to see how he deals with that, whether Edmund is able to bring his best tennis to the big occasion, because one thing we haven't seen from Edmund yet is him beating these elite players. Yes, he beat Grigor Dimitrov to reach the semi-finals in Melbourne, but Dimitrov himself is not the most consistent top player. Whenever Edmund Edmund has had shots against the big four previously, he has not come out on top. However, he has taken a set off Rafael Nadal on clay, which takes some doing, as we're seeing at the moment. I myself am not convinced that Edmund will be able to bring his best tennis consistently against Djokovic, and I am not sure whether that will be enough for him to get the win. As I stated in the piece I wrote, I think it's very important for Djokovic to get this win that consolidates his great win over Nishikori, because in Monte Carlo a few weeks ago, he got a very good grinding win over Borna Cioric, and then he lost that close one with Dominic Team. So if Djokovic loses this match with Edmund, it's back to square one, as it were, and starting to build things up again, but that recent win it did feel very different for him, and I just feel that he has that confidence back that he has been lacking so much. Also at the beginning of this tournament, I wrote two tournament previews where I broke down the draw and actually made predictions for each quarter, and they have had varying success so far. In my ATP draw preview, I actually predicted Kei Nishikori to reach the semi-finals, but I also said that whoever won the match between Djokovic and Nishikori would make the last four, in my opinion. 
my shaky opinion. Because Djokovic, once he gets a win like that over a big name player in the first round of a tournament, that is going to give him self-confidence that he didn't have before. Mentality and confidence is the groundwork for someone's game, so to get that win was massive for Djokovic, but he needs to back it up. So even though I think this is Edmund's best shot at beating Djokovic to date, I'm going to give Djokovic the benefit of the doubt on this occasion. I'm not sure how Djokovic would fare over three sets, so because I'm predicting Djokovic to win, I am going to predict Novak Djokovic to win in straight sets. But I do expect this to be a close match, so it would not surprise me one bit if Kyle Edmonds came away with the win and Djokovic was looking on uncertain ground once more. Well, there you go, they are my two predictions for today. I'm sorry I couldn't do more matches, blame the Madrid Open, that schedule is weird. I will probably be returning turning next with some quarterfinal predictions for either the WTA or the ATP, it depends whether Madrid decides to just skip them in favour of going straight to the final or something. So thank you for watching, do remember to subscribe if you haven't already done so because I am going to be uploading more regularly. Thank you for all the feedback you left me after the last video, I appreciated it very much, I'm taking everything into consideration. Do continue to check out my website The Tennis Journal because I am finally getting regular content up there and if you haven't visited in a while you will have missed some stuff over the past few days so check out my website link in the description do comment and let me know who you think will come out on top in these two matches i am especially interested to hear your opinions regarding djokovic versus edmund there you go wrapping it up thank you for watching and i will see you next time